Hello trainer, it's Louie Trainer Lynn again and you know what's up. It's again time to give every single Gen 3 Pokemon a new type form. We're gonna almost jump right into it, but first I'm gonna remind you that you can draw your own type form and then you can tag me on Instagram or Twitter and I will retweet it or repost it because I would really like to see them and I will also feature them in my video. And just so you know trainers, this is your last chance to do it because the next video is going to be the last part because we have almost come to the end of all Hoenn Pokemon. So if you want to be featured on this channel, you know, the channel without views that hardly anyone watches, who wouldn't want this? It's a great deal. But let's get started and look at some Pokemon. So today we're starting in a desert it seems because the first one is Baltoy. New type, flying. A long long time ago a small group of Baltoi levitated up to the sky and eventually just adopted to that environment and became flying types. They're usually floating like so high up in the sky that you can't really see them from the ground. You actually need like to be flying on a Pokemon or be in an airplane or helicopter or something. And they're also quite unusual, so a lot of the time when people see them they mistake them for angels. Which has led to some people kind of actually thinking they are angels and sort of worshipping them. And for my design this actually came to be because my inspiration was sea angels. And I know that kind of looks more like a water type because they live in the ocean, but I thought the body shape was perfect for it and I'm focusing on the angel part rather than the sea part. So let's evolve Balto into Claydol. So again I thought I could tie into the, the sort of meme, you know, biblically accurate angels having like a billion eyes or something because Claydol does actually have a lot of eyes, so I thought I would actually tie the whole angel thing together even more. And I do actually like them. They're very solitary Pokemon, they live alone in the sky and hardly ever see other Pokemon. And here are the shiny forms. And we're moving on to the next Pokemon, and like I said, we're still in the desert. It's the fossil Pokemon Lily. New type is Poison. So Poison type Lily has only a slightly different lifestyle than the regular ones. They are more aggressive and they move around a lot more. But of course when I say they move a lot, it's still not a lot because Lily's body is made to be very static. It sits stills and captures things using its um, pedal tentacle antenna thingies. But they really try. They try so hard to move around. Which of course is only going to happen once they evolve into Cradley. And Cradley is a fully aquatic Pokemon, as you can see, they live underwater. In case I didn't say that earlier, they still live underwater. Look, we're doing ho and just assume half of them live under the ocean anyway. Team Aqua forever, Team Agma sucks. <laughs> but anyway, it's inspired by prehistoric aquatic creatures with a touch of like the Loch Ness monster. And the bright patterns and stuff is, of course, a reference to, you know, real life poison animals having colors to like warn predators that they can't eat them because they're poisonous. It seems like these poison types were just a natural variation of Lily. It just took the scientists and whatever a little bit longer to find this form in particular as a fossil, so they could revive it because they all died out sadly. And here we have the shiny forms, they are different colorful versions. I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely love this line. I would love to have like a Loch Nessy monster. I know Lapras kind of is one, but I want more! Moving on to the second fossil Pokemon of the region, Anorith. New type, fire. I feel like I have a very gen 1 mind when it comes to fire types because like half of the time I'm like, ah yes, let's put an animal on fire. Perfect. But like, come on, it looks kind of cool. Or hot, I guess, because it's fire. So fire type Anorith is actually not a fossil Pokemon, unlike Lily. This one survived by moving into volcanoes and living in lava and people just didn't see them for like a really long time because it's really hard for humans to like go into lava because we burn up. Fire type Anorith is a very shy Pokemon that lives in big packs and they evolve into Armaldo, which is again just an animal of fire. Because they're bigger and stronger, they tend to be the protectors of the very shy and scared Anorith. And trainers, I have to admit, the whole time I was drawing these two, the only thing on my mind was that meme that's just like, so you're telling me I was shrimp fried as rice. The whole time. I'm so tired. But let's look at the shiny forms. They're just like a really dark color because I thought it would look cool. I mean hot. It would look hot. And it just doesn't feel right to say that about a Pokemon. I feel like it implies a level of attraction I'm not comfortable with when it comes to Pokemon. 
I'm just gonna move on to the next Pokemon. Next Pokemon is Feebas. New type, Electric. So Electric Feebas is not super different from other Feebas. It's considered a very ugly Pokemon and people don't like it that much. Most people aren't even aware that this isn't a regular Feebas. You'd think they'd be because the colors are different. This one is clearly yellow, but people just don't care enough. And they're like, oh, I guess it's shiny, but it's Feebas and it's ugly, so who cares? Phoebus itself is just a fish, it kind of doesn't care, it just goes around do doing its fish business with its little fish suitcase and its fish time, I'm just kidding. But you can evolve it using a Thunderstone, and you get Milotic. Which, side note, I don't like the name Milotic, I want to say Milotic, but no, it's Milotic. But anyway, Milotic is a lot more popular than Phoebus is. Weirdly, people still haven't really figured out that Milotic comes from Phoebus, so people still dislike Phoebus, because people are stupid. I think that's one of the things we know about humans, is that we're all stupid, so it makes sense, even in a fictional setting. It's generally fierce and like to battle, but it's mostly used by trainers for contests, because it's incredibly beautiful. The scales of a Milotic has a constant spark of electricity, so it kind of glitters, because you see the sparks, you know? It doesn't really hurt, it's, at most it's like static electricity where it's a little tiny zap. And the shinies are a striking reddish-orange color. <laughs> Next Pokemon, Cast Form. And any type is Fairy. So Cast Form's gimmick is of course weather forms, so I decided this one is simply the Mr. Terrain form. So at the base it's just, you know, a regular normal type Cast Form. But you still need it to be like a special individual that can actually utilize the misty terrain to become a fairy type. They're extremely rare and for this reason they are also extremely popular. Because everyone knows the Pokemon world is full of people who like unique Pokemon that are just slightly different than regular. Looking at you, shiny Pokemon. And when speaking of shiny Pokemon, the fairy mist is more purple. And we are quickly moving on to Kecleon. New type, flying. So I just turn it into one of those gliding lizards. So this flying type Kecleon is kind of a real trickster. It's still got the camouflage ability, so it can just turn itself invisible and then kind of surprise people from the sky. It doesn't do it to attack people, but it finds it really entertaining to see people like shocked and scared for a second. And of course, because it can turn itself invisible, it's incredibly hard to actually find and capture one. But just like with regular Kecleon, it cannot change the red zigzag pattern. I also kind of imagine them just hanging out with like Halucha, just because of the kind of face mask, I guess. I think they'd make a cute duo. And for the shiny, given that I said that it worked like a regular Kecleon, I did the regular Kecleon thing and turned the zigzag pattern blue. Next Pokemon, Chapet. New type, Psychic. I really like this one. It's a fun one, it's strange, but fun, you'll see. So Psychic Chapet isn't too different. The main difference is the fact that its body has these uh, squiggly patterns that it can actually flash in different colors. It's a very playful and happy Pokemon, but it does actually have an ulterior motive. As Chapet like flashes these different colors, it's actually a method for hypnotizing. So it approaches kids and small Pokemon that are easily lured by these colors and then will hypnotize them to follow them. Luring their victims all the way to Banette. And Banette is a Pokemon that is tired of being the doll controlled by others. It's no longer the puppet, it's the puppet master controlling others using very thin, almost invisible psychic threads. So they're not like physically solid, you can like move your hand through them and stuff and they'll still be there. But it's not an evil Pokemon, it just likes to use these Pokemon to like put on a show for fun. So you can find these Chapet and Banet at sort of like a haunted fairground. That's the vibe, that's where you'll find them. Once the show is over, it just lets the victim go. Because in the end, it's just an abandoned doll that just wants people to play with it. And here are the shiny forms. Moving on to the next Pokemon, which is another of my Hoenn favorites, it's Duskull. New type, Dragon. Which is an interesting type to get for Duskull. I think the most logical thing to do is to just replace the skull with a dragon skull. It's virtually the same, otherwise it's just like the essence of the uh, dead creature or whatever you call it is a dragon. I really like the idea of this kind of being almost a normal dust skull, it just happens to be another creature that the skull came from. 
So like if we imagine that the skull is like the reborn form of whatever dead thing the skull came from, this just happened to be a dragon Pokemon and the dragon Pokemon then turned the ghost type into also a dragon. And then we just keep the same thing when it evolves into Dusclops, it's like a mummified dragon. Which personally, I think it's actually kind of adorable. Not gonna lie, I absolutely would use this Pokemon in game a lot more than Dusclops because I don't really like Dusclops, despite the fact that Duskull is one of my favorite home Pokemon. Dragon Dusclops is a very proud Pokemon, it helps spirits to the other side and yes, I'm kind of imagining them as half ghost type still. And I turn the shiny forms into shades of purple because I think that's both a very dragony color and a very ghostly color. Next Pokemon is Tropius, new type, Dark. This form of Tropius is not a grass type anymore, but it kind of tries to disguise itself as if it is. So typically what will happen is you have one dark type Tropius that will like infiltrate a group of grass type Tropius. And then it will just like make all of the others do the work and just like steal their food and like hide behind them in case there's trouble. But in reality they're probably the ones causing the trouble because they're very like sneaky and mischievous. And because they're so like lazy and annoying and don't want to do the work for themselves, they never make packs of their own of just like dark dark tropias. They always just try to infiltrate another group. And here's the shiny form. I don't remember if I had a reason for it turning red and pink, but who cares? Next Pokemon, Shimeko, new type, Bug. You know, my god, trainers, I actually really love this one. I just did the most straightforward thing. I just turned it into like just a little happy bug. And it's so cute, and somehow it kind of works. Well, it is the kind of Pokemon that's more like a convergent evolution than it is like a regional form. But I've already done that a bunch of times at this point, so who cares? It's a Chimeco. That's a bug. And it's adorable. I love it. And it still has the little chime sound. It still sounds like a bell, which just makes it more adorable. This is a stellar Pokemon. It's just a little guy. Sometimes you, all you need is just a little guy. And for the shiny, I turned it white and pink and purple because I thought, what other adorable colors could I use? And that's what I came up with, and I love this one as well. But very quickly, moving on to the next Pokemon, a fan favorite, Absol. New type, Electric. It's a very straightforward electric type transformation. I just made it spikier and yellow. So I really like about Absol the fact that it warns people about disasters that are about to come. So I think this one warns for thunderstorms. So rather than this Pokemon like being the electric type that causes thunderstorms, it kind of attacks the thunderstorms with its electric powers and like repels. The this is very logical, don't question it. We are fighting electricity with electricity. This is logic. I have been told this works by anime. So yeah, it like saps the electricity away with its own electricity. And the shiny form is like a pale blue color. Why not move on to the next Pokemon, which is... Why not? New type, Fairy. And this was a perfect opportunity to give it the color of the regular form's shiny, this sort of pinkish purple. It fits the fairy type very well. Other than that, it's actually very similar to a regular Why Not. It's, you know, happy-go-lucky, friendly, baby Pokemon, very soft and playful. There's not much else to say about it. This one would never join Team Rocket, it's too nice. Team Skull maybe, because they're kind of a joke anyway. And the shiny is just another lighter pink shade. Because I can't lie, I just love pink fairy Pokemon. They're cute. Next Pokemon, Snowrand. New type, Rock. Rock type Snowrand came to be a long time ago when some of them wandered into a mountain and just kind of got stuck living in caves. So Rock type Snowrand is considered a very lucky Pokemon. It's a popular like folklore belief that if you see one, if you're a miner, you are soon about to strike gold and find that amazing treasure that you've been looking for all along. And Snowrand evolved into Glalie, the flying head, and of course I did the most straightforward thing of just turning the ice head into a rock head. Unlike Snowrunt, which is a sign of luck, this one is actually a sign of bad luck because they are pretty aggressive about protecting their own territory. So for this reason, people also kind of try to gift them things to kind of be able to keep working in the mountain and trying to appease them by like bringing them nice peace offerings. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And the shinies are darker grey and have blue eyes. 
and we are moving on to what is truly a top tier Pokemon out of all Pokemon. It is Sveal, and the new type is Fighting. And I cannot imagine a less fitting type for this adorable, cute ball of happiness. But we're gonna do it anyway, so here it goes. But it actually makes sense if you compare it to the real world, because uh, seals do tend to fight each other quite often and be aggressive, so it works. So that's what they're doing, they like kind of having wrestling matches with each other, like real seals would. And I swapped the colors because you know how baby seals are white and that's adorable. And that's what we're going for. Sveal of course evolves into Celio. So little Sveal kind of is a bit aggressive, but not that into wrestling yet, but Celio is when it really gets going. They start challenging each other, they constantly have like tournaments where they fight each other, but they are nice sports, they're not like dark types trying to use sneaky methods or cheat or whatever. They're just like, they just wanna be the most powerful purely by like strength and power and skill. Only if they manage to become the number one Celio winner of a big fighting tournament, do they become a Wolverine. Wolverines are incredibly respected. If they fight you, you have to fight back, but you are not allowed to challenge them as like a little Celio or a Sveal. That's like big no-no. It's against the social norms of the Sveals. They kind of act like the master. They train up their Celios and their Sveals. Despite looking really aggressive and challenging others and being really into fighting, they're really nice Pokemon. They're truly the master that wants to see others succeed. And for the shiny forms, I wanted to do something like realistic, so I turned them into like gray and brown because those are the colors of real seals. And trainers, we'll come to the featured art section. This time we have two people who have showed me their own type forms. First up, we have the same person as last time, the Twitter user Puppet. This time, Puppet made a Waylord, a Steel Waylord. Which I really like, because it's an aircraft carrier, which means that the original one is a blimp, which would be flying in the sky. And then we have the aircraft carrier on top of water, and then we have mine, that's a submarine, underwater. So we're just like covering every area. I think that's really funny. So thanks again to Puppet for showing me Waylord this time, and then the next trainer, Instagram user this time, Gussie.jpg, who made a dark type, Torkoal. This one is super great, I really love how it's giving me like steampunk vibes. The smoke mustache that's supposed to like mimic a sneaky all-time villain is absolutely hilarious. It's a great detail, so thank you to Gussie for showing me this one. And as I said before, if anyone else wanna join in and show me their drawings, it's the last time to have them featured in a video because the next part will be the absolute last part because we have run out of Hoenn Pokemon. We are so close, trainers. We're almost done with the Hoenn decks. And until next time, trainers, keep creating and keep catching. Bye.